Hello and welcome back to the Gospel Teachings of R.A.K. This is Jacob, and today we're going to be talking about angels. The summary? Angel simply means messenger. God created angels to minister to or aid human beings who are to inherit salvation. He uses two types of angels. One, heavenly spirits who, when they are sent to give a man or woman his message, usually take on the appearance of a man, and actual earthly flesh and blood men born of woman, or woman. God specifically says we are not to worship, give God-like honor, respect, or reverence to the angels, for anyone or anything that is exalted in the sight of man is an abomination to God. The discussion, one, what is an angel? Etymology of the word angel, Middle English, from Old French, angel, from Latin, angelus, from Greek, angelos, literally, messenger. That an angel is a messenger is illustrated biblically by the following. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1, Behold, I send my angel, and he shall prepare the way before my face. Matthew chapter 11 verse 7 and 10, Jesus began to say to the crowds concerning John the Baptist, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who shall make ready your way before you. 2. How did angels come to be? Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. For in him were created all things, in the heavens and on the earth, things visible and things invisible. 3. What are some of the characteristics that God's angels possess? Jumping to 2 Kings, chapter 14, verse 20. But you, O king, are wise, according to the wisdom of an angel of God, to understand all things upon earth. Psalms 102, verse 20. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you that are mighty in strength and execute his word, hearkening to the voice of his orders. Psalms 103, verse 4. Who makes your angels spirits, and your ministers a burning fire? Matthew chapter 22 verse 30 For at the resurrection they will neither marry nor be given in marriage, but will be as angels of God in heaven. Hebrews 1 5 For to which of the angels has he ever said, You are my son, I this day have begotten you, and again I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. Point four, what is the job of God's angels? Hebrews chapter one, verse seven and 14. And of the angels, indeed, he says, he makes his angels spirits. That's a quote from Psalm 103, four as well. Are they not all ministering spirits sent for service for the sake of those who shall inherit salvation? Point five, how many angels did God create? Um, jumping to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 53. Or do you suppose that I cannot entreat my father, and he will even now furnish me with more than twelve legions? Uh, legion definition, a unit of the Roman army consisting of 3,000 to 6,000 soldiers of angels. More than twelve legions of angels. So, uh, do the math twelve times, so what, about 4,500? That's uh, a lot. It's a lot of angels, and um, he's saying that's 12 of how many, who knows. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, as well as 13 and 15. And there were shepherds, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. And it came to pass, when the angels had departed, from them into heaven. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. But you have come to Mount Sion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the company of many thousands of angels. Point number six. In what form do God's angels come? A. They can come from heaven disguised as a man. This is Judges chapter 13, verses 2, 3, 6, and 16. Now there was a certain man in Sarah, and of the race of Dan, whose name was Manu, and his wife was barren, and an angel of the Lord appeared to her, 
And when she was come to her husband, she said to him, A man of God came to me, having the countenance of an angel, very awful. And Manu knew not it was the angel of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2. And do not forget to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Tobias chapter 5 verses 4 through 6 and 17. But go now and seek you out some faithful man to go with you for his hire, that you may receive it while I yet live. Then Tobias going forth found a beautiful young man, standing girded, as it were, ready to walk. And not knowing that he was an angel of God, he saluted him, and Raphael the angel answered. Matthew chapter 1 verse 20 But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Do not be afraid, Joseph, son of David, to take to you Mary your wife. For that which is begotten in her is of the Holy Spirit. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Now there was in Caesarea a man named Cornelius, a centurion of the cohort called Italian. He was devout and God fearing, as was all his household, giving much alms to the people and praying to God continually. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw distinctly in a vision an angel of God come in to him and say to him, Cornelius, your prayers and your alms have gone up and been remembered in the sight of God. B. They can come as a literal earthly human being. Malachi chapter 2, 7. For the lips of the priest shall keep knowledge, and they shall seek the law at his mouth, because he is the angel of the Lord of hosts. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. Behold, I send my angel, and he shall prepare the way before my face. Matthew chapter 11 verse 7 and 10. Jesus began to say to the crowds concerning John, John the Baptist, This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who shall make ready your way before you. Number 7. Are there guardian angels, and if so, who has one? Genesis chapter 48 verses 15 and 16. And Jacob said, The angel that delivers me from all evils, bless these boys. Psalms 33 verses 7 through 8. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord shall encamp round about them that fear him, and shall deliver them. Psalms chapter 90 verses 10 through 12. There shall no evil come to you, nor shall the scourge come near your dwelling. For he has given his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jumping to Matthew 18 verse 10. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, their angels in heaven always behold the face of my Father in heaven. The conclusion of that is those that love God and all young children have guardian angels looking after them. So those who love God as well as young children have guardian angels. Point eight, are all angels good and not evil? Jumping to Job chapter four, verse 18. Behold, they that serve him are not steadfast and in his angels he found wickedness. So evidently no. There are some evil angels. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. For God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but dragged them down by infernal ropes to Tartarus, and delivered them to be tortured and kept in custody for judgment. Jude chapter 1, verse 6. And the angels also who did not preserve their original state, but forsook their abode, He has kept in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. And those are the fallen angels that are spoken about in Genesis. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 1 through 3. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, bring your case to be judged before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more worldly things? Jumping to Apocalypse chapter 12, verses 7 through 9, also known as the Revelation of John. 
And there was a battle in heaven. Michael and his angels battled with the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and they did not prevail, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And that great dragon was cast down, the ancient serpent, he who is called the devil, and Satan, who leads astray the whole world. And he was cast down to the earth, and with him his angels were cast down. Point 9. How many heavenly angels are mentioned by name in the scriptures? Four heavenly angels are mentioned by name in the Bible. That is Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, and the devil, a.k.a. the serpent, Satan, Lucifer, or the dragon. Tobias, chapter 12, verse 15. For I am the angel Raphael, one of the seven who stand before the Lord. Apocalypse, chapter 1, verse 4. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, which is Asia Minor, Grace be to you and peace from him, who is and who was and who is coming, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne. Um, This is also referencing Zechariah chapter 3, 4, and Apocalypse 4 and 5. Daniel chapter 9, verse 21. As I was yet speaking in prayer, behold the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, flying swiftly, touched me at the time of the evening sacrifice. Luke chapter 1, verses 19 and 26. And the angel answered and said to him, or Zachary the priest, I am Gabriel, who stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth. Next is Jude chapter 1, verse 9. Yet when Michael the archangel was fiercely disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, he did not venture to bring against him an accusation of blasphemy, but said, May the Lord rebuke you. Daniel chapter 10 verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of the Persians resisted me, Gabriel, one and twenty days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. Also see Apocalypse chapter 12, 7 and Daniel 12, 1. Note, though the devil is not specifically called an angel, it is implied in many scriptures. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Who did rise in the morning? How are you fallen to the earth that did wound the nations? Luke chapter 10, verse 18. But he, or Jesus, said to them, I was watching Satan fall as lightning from heaven. Apocalypse 12, verses 7 through 9, 13, and 17. And there was a battle in heaven. Michael and his angels battled with the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and they did not prevail. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And that great dragon was cast down, the ancient serpent, he who is called the devil and Satan, who leads astray the whole world. And he was cast down to the earth. And with him his angels were cast down. And when the dragon saw that he was cast down to the earth, he pursued the woman, who had brought forth the male child. And the dragon was angered at the woman, and went away to wage war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God, and hold fast the testimony of Jesus. Point 10. What are some examples of the services provided by angels to God's people? 4 Kings chapter 19, verse 35. And it came to pass that night that an angel of the Lord came and slew in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. Psalms 102 verse 20. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you that are mighty in strength and execute his word, hearkening to the voice of his orders. Daniel chapter 6 verse 16 and 22. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and cast him into the den of the lions. My God has sent his angel, and has shut up the mouths of the lions, and they have not hurt me. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 and 11. Then Jesus was led into the desert by the Spirit, to be tempted by the devil. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Luke chapter 22, verse 39, 41, and 43. And he came out and went, according to his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And kneeling down, he began to pray. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven to strengthen him. 
Acts chapter 5, verse 17 through, um, 17 through 19. But the high priest seized the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison and led them out. It's also found in Acts chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. Gospel of John chapter 12, verses 28 and 29. Father, glorify your name. There came therefore a voice from heaven. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Then the crowd, which was standing round and had heard, said that it was thunder. Others said an angel had spoken. Job chapter 37 verses 2 through 5. Hear you attentively the terror of his voice and the sound that comes out of his mouth. He beholds under all the heavens, and his light, or lightning, is upon the ends of the earth. After it a noise shall roar, he shall thunder with the voice of his majesty, and shall not be found out when his voice shall be heard. God shall thunder wonderfully with his voice, he that does great and unsearchable things. Daniel chapter 3 verses 49 and 50. But the angel of the Lord went down with Azarias and his companions into the furnace, and he drove flames out of the fire out of the furnace. And made the mist of the furnace like the blowing of a wind bringing dew. And the fire touched them not at all, nor troubled them, nor did them any harm. 3 Kings chapter 19 verses 5 and 6. Behold, an angel of the Lord said to him, or Elias, arise and eat. He looked, and behold, there was at his head a hearth cake and a vessel of water. And he ate and drank, and he fell asleep again. Point 11, God says, do not worship the angels or graven things. Exodus 20 verses 4 through 6, you shall not make to yourself a graven thing. You shall not adore them or love them greatly, nor serve them, be of benefit to them in any way. I am the Lord your God, mighty jealous, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands to them that love me and keep my commandments. The prophecy of Isaiah 42, 8. I, the Lord, this is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to graven things. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9. For I think God has set forth us the apostles, God's earthly messengers or angels, last of all, as men doomed to death seeing that we have been made a spectacle to the world and to the angels and to men. Luke chapter 16, verse 15. That which is exalted in the sight of men is an abomination before God. Colossians chapter 2, verse 18. Let no one cheat you who takes pleasure in self-abasement in worship of the angels. Apocalypse chapter 22, verses 8 and 9. And I, John, am he who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed me these things. And he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours, and of your brethren the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. So even John in this um, vision was confused. He thought that it was God he was speaking to. It was not. In fact, it was just an angel. And he said, no, worship God like I do. I follow what what the books say, <laughs> what your Bible says. Acts chapter 15, verses 19 and 20. Therefore, my judgment is not to disquiet those who from among the Gentiles are turning to the Lord, but to send them written instructions to abstain from anything that has been contaminated or made ungodly by being associated with idols. So, this paper on angels, um, there's there's a lot of um, points that he goes into, but I think there's some majorly important ones. And one is that angels are not meant to be worshipped. Um, that's something that we should remember. It is in the Ten Commandments. Um, anything that is in the heaven above, earth beneath, or the waters under the earth, that's anything you can see um, or anything you think think you can like consider what it might look like, like an angel, like Jesus, like Jesus, like God. Um, those aren't things that are meant to be made into graven images. That is not what God likes. He thinks it's an abomination. 
Um, another thing that I think is important is that there's only a few angels that are named. And um, it's pretty obvious that those ones that are named are very um, important to God. Um, especially if you think that's Raphael, Gabriel, um, Michael, and then obviously the fourth one is the devil. So, I mean, he uh, was at some point a big factor and um, now has turned into um, the evil side of, I guess, a large part of God's world now. Um, regardless of that, uh, angels are messengers. They are sent to God's people to help and comfort them sometimes and um, make sure they know that in the worst of times that God is there for us and God is there for you. And as my grandfather stated in this, in this paper, we all, if we are God-fearing, have a guardian angel as well as children. Children do. And we have to remember, just like Jesus, um, children are very are just innocent. Innocent um, and they very much rely on their parents for everything. And that is why Jesus and um, the Bible is um, speaking so much and so well about um, children and be like a child or you have to be like a child to enter the kingdom of heaven. Because that is what he means. You have to completely rely on God, put it all in his hands. And um, sometimes it's hard for us to do, but it will benefit you so greatly to be able to be like, okay, well, there's nothing I can do about this. This is God's plan. I need to move on in the best way forward. Um, way easier said than done. But if you consider that is the truth, it may help you in that way. And I think over time it has helped me. Um, remember, this is just a testing ground. It is just a testing ground. And yes, sometimes we get so involved in what this testing ground involves. But there is a whole real life waiting for us. This is just the test to get there. So I ask you all, um, consider this message today about angels. Uh, make sure we're not wor worshiping. Make sure we are not worshiping angels. Make sure that um, we are staying God-fearing so that we can have a guardian angel because God knows right now we all need a guardian angel. So repent of your sins, be baptized, find Christ, and God bless you.